September in Istanbul is no ordinary month. With exhibitions, a major museum opening, as well as the city's biennial among the highlights, it's enough to fill anyone's art calendar. Istanbul's art scene is experiencing a boom at the moment, but is it sustainable? Art critic Kaya Genç is in our studio to talk more about Art Month of Istanbul. Kaya, welcome to Showcase. Thank you so much Hello. for taking the time. So, in 2005, mag the magazine Newsweek um, declared Istanbul one of the coolest cities in the world because of the opening of Istanbul Modern Museum. And then after that, Istanbul has been um, held as Istanbul and, you know, all that um, vibe and trendy uh, atmosphere in the air started happening. Do you think that reputation is making a comeback at the moment? Well, I worked for Newsweek. It was my first job and I worked in front of the poster of that cover. So I, that cover is very dear to me. But that cover was fake because there were <laughs> clubbers on it and it said cool Istanbul, but there was no artwork on it. So it's just a city that, where you can entertain, where you can spend money, where you can drink, this and that. So uh, just like that, the money that poured in in those years 15 years ago, was a bit illusionary for the art world. The art world was fostering its relations here. Uh, contemporary art was thriving, but it was very organic. It was coming from these neighborhoods in Istanbul, tales from Istanbul neighborhoods, very authentic artists emerging and curators working with them. But when the interference of global capital arrived, I think the, for the artists, it was a challenge because, of course, they loved the money. Who doesn't? And they could finance their art, they could finance their exhibitions. But it also took away from their authenticity. So some of them left Istanbul, uh, others stayed. And now, you know, Istanbul experienced calamities in 2015 and 16. You know, ISIS attacked, mm -hmm. Gulenists attacked, all these things. But some artists chose to stay here and they survived the worst. And they opened collectives, they worked in reading groups, uh, these curators and artists, you know, they were in solidarity. Let's pin it down, Kaya. We've been talking about some concepts, but Artar, for example, the museum, it's, for many, it's going to be a game changer. That's how they believe it's going to serve to the city. Do you think it's a bit of a stretch to say that? How do you think Artar is going to change the balances in Istanbul art world? So, t Turkish, white Turkish money invested on Istiklal Avenue for many years. You know, it's not a historically Turkish neighborhood. It's the neighbor of the westernizers and the minorities. But then, uh, you know, there was a nostalgia for Istanbul's past. And in 1980s and 90s, the white Turkish capital invested uh, heavily uh, in Istiklal Street. Now they find Istiklal Street a bit too crowded. They don't like the new culture. They're like, oh, now there are all these Syrians and this and that. So let's escape. So the interesting thing is the westernizers are escaping the center of westernization uh, from the Ottoman times. And they're, mo they're changing the access to Dolaptere, uh, where there was a university mm. that, that, I stud that I studied in two decades ago. And, you know, the, the kids were afraid to go there. But for me, it was wonderful because there are all these little churches, uh, wonderful artists and musicians there. Mm. And now there is a challenge for these new museums because they can be like, you know, we come from Nishantashu, this neighborhood, that neighborhood, and we're going to teach you. The fancy uh, neighborhoods of yes. Istanbul. Yeah. We're going to show you art. We're going to yeah. introduce you to modern art. But of course, contemporary art in Turkey comes from those neighborhoods. So it's actually their art. So for people who might not know, Dolap Dere uh, is changing immensely at the moment by some art institutions and um, art museums. And people are worried about hypergentrification in that neighborhood. And um, some people find it a very top-down approach, bringing art and museums and like grand buildings and amazing openings to that neighborhood, which is seen as the ghetto in Istanbul. Yes. So that's what you're referring to in your answer. And um, I wonder if you think that, um, if you're worried about Dolap Dere's future, this neighborhood's future. Yes, I'm worried. I, near, I live near Topane, and in Topane there was a big conflict between those art gallery openings, the crowds that went there, and the locals. And it wasn't resolved in a civilized way. And in Dolapter now there are 
fancy hotels, there are visa centers, there are other galleries and some insurance companies. And the locals who live there, it's a bit too much. So that the university that I studied in uh, found a solution to it. You know, they employed local people, they worked with them. So it was financially a good uh, way to live for them. So the galleries and the museums have to follow a similar route or otherwise they'll be seen as snobs and mm. the locals won't like them. It's not only about Istanbul at the moment. There are some art institutions, museums, etc. challenging Istanbul's position as the sole art player in the country. Do you think there is a bit of a competition? What is this telling us, the new openings in uh, other cities like Eskişehir or um, Izmir perhaps? What do you think? So the Anatolian Tigers are raising their heads. The Anatolian uh, bridge, the, all the these industrialists mm -hmm. who are coming from these cities, they say, we are here. And it's not just Istanbul. You know, people are a bit too much you know, fed up with Istanbul. We know Istanbul stories. It has been told too many times. But in Eskişehir, for example, and you cannot pinpoint it, those new institutions, Eskişehir. Is it secular? Is it Islamist? Is it left or right? You can't pinpoint it. It's just money. You know, there's some new money in Eskişehir. And they say, you know, we can build a great new museum. We can have these public programs and we can challenge Istanbul. And we have a great train ride to offer you. <laughs> and uh, lots of interesting artists, as we have seen last week. So I think decentralization always is a good thing for Turkey, historically. And for artistic world as well, we need more decentralization. And it is definitely happening. Let's wait and see where it's going to lead us. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kaya Genç. Thank you. <laughs>